Hello and welcome. Robotic process automation is changing the lives and indeed the, the very nature of organizations and how they deliver services to companies uh, both in India and overseas. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening. A lot of people don't even understand how it works or how different kinds of RPA are actually impacting the final service or product that you consume. So well, I have someone with me who is uh, going to take us through what it means and more importantly what it can do in future. I'm joined by Warren Lettingham. Uh, Warren, thank you very much for jo uh, joining us. And you're a robotic process automation company. So Correct. tell us about what's, what are the significant uh, uh, developments that you've seen in this space in the last couple of years, and then I'm going to ask you about where do you see it going. Sure, okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me as well. Yeah, so in robotic process automation, it's uh, still, even though it's maturing, it's still a relatively new field. And companies have started their journey, mm -hmm. and, they've, uh, and what that means is they've started to automate processes. Mm -hmm. And typically it's within uh, larger enterprises where there's lots of inefficiency. So they're able to deploy robotic process automation and, uh, and they've started that journey to automate some processes. What we've found is that on that journey, they've not had the ability to scale and go beyond, for example, the research is showing most companies are not uh, scaling beyond 50 robots, for example, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so they've hit a ceiling. So part of and, what... And when you say 50 yes. robots, you mean 50 uh, artificial intelligence algorithms? Or uh, so you yeah, mean something more physical? Yeah, so these are... Okay, so no, that's a good point. So in robotics, mm. there's two types of robotics. One is physical robots. Mm. Think of Japan. Mm. Mm. And in RPA, it's software robots. Mm. So when we talk about software robots in RPA, it is on servers. Mm. So it's, it's uh, robots running on servers and they're running on machines. So that's the context of uh, RPA. And uh, when we say robots, really that's, you can think of that as like processing power. Mm. So how many a robot can cover one process, for example. They work 24 by 7 in an unattended um, manner, which means they're running on servers. The attended uh, robots are running on a desktop mm. with a user mm. and they're helping users. So we have attended, unattended. And hybrid. And hybrid mm. in between. And, uh, and that's the future. The future we can discuss also on hybrid. I see that as like a being very important. Now overlaying this from Cryon, is a automated process discovery, mm. which allows us to discover processes using our technology, uh, and it's the beginning of the cycle. So if you discover process in an automated fashion, then that links into the RPA process of developing new robots and, uh, and then deploying them. So we have an end-to-end -end process. So give us an uh, example yeah. of uh, where you've seen the application. You talked about traditional companies, traditional yes, processes, yeah, yeah. and where the impact has been the most noticeable. Yeah, okay, so I think industry-wise, uh, BFSI is leading. Yeah, there's, um, and in particularly for Cryon, I think we're seeing lots of insurance companies in particular. We're signing banks also in the region. Uh, insurance claims processing, for example, is a very common one. Um, it's it's a very, usually a long process, labor-intensive, and we'll be able, able to, you know, provide our customers with uh, a lot of benefits there. And, um, and they've seen realization and real tangible benefits on ROI, and, uh, and that's building on itself now to look at more processes. Right, and, and we are talking about uh, uh, RPA, or uh, robotic process automation, in the context of global capability centers. You know? So these are centers right. which are delivering uh, uh, value or doing work, uh, which is fairly critical for organizations or motherships sitting elsewhere in the world. So yes. what are the trends that you see there? Yeah, great, okay. So look, um, uh, this week I've just, and actually today I gave a, a, a discussion, I gave a talk on um, robotic process automation in the context of GCCs. And, uh, and where this is how I think it sort of plays out, is that um, either the GCCs in India um, develop capability around automating processes and become what we're calling a global, automated, or a global automation con uh, center of excellence. So if they develop that capability, they can serve um, the wider globe, for example, in regard to automation. And if they don't do that, I think there'll be an opportunity missed in the sense that um, companies around the world will develop those automation uh, centers of excellence around and on their own. And so they won't necessarily wait for the GC to, to develop that capability. And, uh, and you'll see that, you can see how that could play out. If, if uh, around the world, different companies develop in-country capability, then the you know the need or the um, requirement for the GCC to be involved in right. that process is less, and and that's an interesting point because mm -hmm. uh, let's say we saw the the first wave or the second wave of work coming here in involving let's say insurance claims processing, right. 
which is being done here uh, in a largely manual way. Yes. And uh, if it is not replaced by automation right here, it could go back and get automated uh, in the home country. That's exactly it. So this is exactly the but opportunity. What prevents that yeah. from happening in any case? So actually nothing except for expertise. If you build the expertise, if you know more about automation than um, other countries, other departments within your global organization, then you'll be the go-to. So, and that's a recommendation to a GCC to be the go-to for automation. And therefore, you, that means you've developed capability to discover processes, um, you've got RPA, a lot of RPA developers, you've got some experience in um, business with business analysts being able to map processes and work with the technology and provide that as a service to your wider organization. Right, and, and that's something that you two as a company are doing, trying to find out where uh, the robots can infiltrate, if one can use that word. Right, yeah, so uh, discover, discover, right, so <laughs> what they can discover. And so when I talked about the ceiling that uh, most organizations have found when they've been deploying RPA, this is how we can um, break through that ceiling. So we can discover more processes because we're using an automated discovery process, which means that uh, our technology can go into an organization map processes that typically, you, and we call it sometimes long tail, mm. so it's not only the main processes that, that you see in, a, in an organization, but also the long tail of smaller um, processes that can be automated, and that's uh, not, it's very costly to track now, and uh, this is something that we can do very fast, and it's using the technology in the way that it should be used to give a full picture of the organization when it comes to business process. And, and where would you say uh, the GCCs or the Global Capability Centers are in that yeah. journey today in terms of yeah. adopting or adapting the, the desirable degree of automation? Yeah, so I would say um, it's still early. And, um, it's still early and however there's fairly widespread adoption. So I think awareness of RPA in the GCC community is, is quite broad. Um, the understanding of what RPA can do is, is well known. However, we're bringing, as Cryon, we're bringing a different uh, view of sort of where we are today and where we can go. And, uh, and it really does start with the pr automated process discovery. And that's the journey then we're, we're combining that capability into automated, and we're calling it automating the automation. So we're automating the whole process from process discovery right through the journey to developing RPA robots and then deploying them. Right. So if you were to look now at the next uh, couple of years, what are the key trends that you see uh, happening and how do you think uh, companies uh, could ride on those trends mm. or uh, benefit from those trends and more so particularly the teams who are sitting in, in India or in countries like India? Okay, so I think uh, can play out in many ways. Uh, I'll give you my view. My view is that hybrid automation will become um, a common way of deploying RPA. So at the moment we talk about attended and unattended. I think hybrid will be the play. And, uh, and I think the, the acceptance by um, us as users and employees will be uh, more widespread. And we'll interact with uh, robots actually w in a more seamless way. And, it's, and it doesn't feel like a robot. It feels like an application that you're looking at, helping you through a process, providing information. And uh, some of the interfaces that you can think of is a typical one will be a chatbot. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very used now, used to um, interacting with chatbots. And you can imagine that if, as that uh, capability becomes more sophisticated, that we can give commands, we can um, have a, a dialogue with the chatbot. In order, and that at the back of the chatbot is an automation process, for example. And I can see that, uh, that users will interact with that uh, in that interface, or it could be voice now. We've got Alexa and the other mm -hmm. types of um, you know, voice capability now that we're becoming more used to. So these are typical interfaces. And then uh, in an enterprise context, you could see that users, um, what we could see is the process discovery looking at the user interaction and then maybe suggesting automation as well, so proactively. And we're calling that con uh, continuous process optimization. And uh, it could recommend, I've seen you do this process, for example, five times. Would you like me to help with that? So then in the GCC context, if there's that co capability here in India, it could mean that that request is sent from a global organization, um, from US, for example, to India to develop the robot, then test it, and then get it deployed back. The robot and the on the user side then says, OK, this, robot's, this uh, task is now ready. And they click on that. It can run the task for them. So this, right. this is how it can play out. Right. And, and last question. I mean, w what's a good case study that comes to mind uh, yeah. where you've seen effective implementation or use of 
RPA? Yeah, okay, look, there, there's many. The good thing about RPA in general is that it's horizontal, mm -hmm. okay? So we're not talking about specific industry. I did mention BFSI as one example. However, there is many, many uh, examples. I mean, some of them, insurance, for example, I've seen where claims processing is, has been taken over by RPA. And uh, in an in a area where users did not want to actually do that task. And, and that area in claims processing was, for example, if there was, many, if there was accidents and injuries and things like that. And so th that team was absorbed by um, constant, if you could l call it bad news, and getting mm -hmm. bad news all of the time. So now that team, uh, it was very insightful from the company because they saw that that team was generally unhappy um, and because of the, <laughs> the tasks that they were dealing with. So now the, that has been handled by RPA and that team is now working on high level tasks and uh, you know, it's, a, it's a very sort of real and tangible um, benefit for the insurance and for that team. Right. One more last question. Sure, sure. So, I mean, you, you, you head APAC. Now, how do yeah. you see the competitive mm -hmm. opportunities and challenges in some ways, let's say, between uh, India and other countries yeah. wanting to be or wanting to play an important or significant role in that global ecosystem? Yeah, look, uh, I think in a, in a broad context, uh, it's well known that India is the, the home of IT services. And, um, and the experts in business process. Mm. Now, what we're talking about as, as Cryon is um, automating the business process. So, to me, it's a, it's a logical extension from India's capability in BPO, for example, to then be experts in process automation, okay? And, uh, and I think uh, by India gaining that position, you know, and I've, I've become aware recently that India in 2019 could become the fifth largest economy in the world, mm. overtaking the UK mm. with a 7.6% growth rate. So uh, these sort of uh, initiatives like automation where it's such a big macro area that can have an impact on the economy, I think uh, it's one to get behind, first of all, but then uh, by building that expertise, I think that's a competitive advantage. Right, right. That's a good note to end on. Thank you so right. much, Warren, for speaking Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you.